we are once again without an organist uh, this evening. And uh, <clears throat> so we're going to try a little something new. Not that you weren't good last week uh, singing a cappella, but uh, uh, my wife decided to uh, get some uh, a recording of the, of the hymns uh, that we're going to sing, the two hymns, and she'll play them and we'll, we'll sing with that accompaniment and we'll see how that, uh, that works. So I th think we'll do all right. Uh, the order of service this evening is Vespers. Uh, please rise. O Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, King who comes to save us. The psalm this evening uh, will be spoken responsively by verse. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn.
the cloudless sun of joy is he who comes to set his people free to God the Spirit raise your happy clouds of praise fling wide the Adorn with prayer and love and joy, so shall your sovereign enter in a new and noble life begin to God. is from the fourth cha uh, chapter of Malachi, beginning with verse 1. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet. On the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts, Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and just decrees that I command him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. O Lord, have mercy on us. The second lesson is taken from the 15th chapter of Romans. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing 
to your name. And again it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles. In him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. O Lord, have mercy on us. The third lesson is taken from the 21st chapter of St. Luke. Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. Jesus said, There will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth the stress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. People fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. O Lord, have mercy on us. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. The text for our evening meditation is taken from the fourth chapter of Malachi. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, Son of Righteousness, let the light of your healing grace shine on us as we hear the word. 
that we may fear, love, and trust in you always. Amen. The other night, I had the TV going on. I think I was watching news. And a commercial came on. It began by showing a family in their living room. They were gathered around a Christmas tree. And the colors immediately set the tone of closeness and warmth and quietness, gentleness. The father was to the left of the screen, the mother to the right, standing by the tree. And in between, slouching on a couch, was a teenage girl. The dad said in a very low, very comforting, soothing voice, this has been quite a year to remember or to forget. The teenage girl, as I said, slouching in the couch, had her head back And she said almost in a sigh, it's not Christmas. It doesn't feel like Christmas. Then she sort of turned her head a little bit and then on the screen was the little sister in the family, the daughter, the child trying to put up an ornament on the tree. And the teenager sighed, wrong. Oh, all wrong. And you could just see how crushed the little girl was to be criticized by her sister. And then the camera refocuses on her Might as well cancel Christmas. They've canceled everything else, she kind of whines. And you could see in the background that the younger girl is going off. She's leaving the room. And the dad doesn't have to say anything. He just sort of looks at his daughter and he does this. And she knows what the father is saying, you go and make this right with your sister again. She goes in her snippiest voice, fine, and gets up and walks to her sister's room. The door is slightly ajar. We can see past the teenage daughter. We can see into the room of the younger girl. She's playing with her dolls, but her heart's not in it. Then the teenage girl, very quietly, begins to sing, Santa is coming to town. And the younger girl turns her head and smiles a little bit and joins her sister in singing, Santa is coming to town. Then, as they say in TV language, the camera cuts. An item comes on the screen, single word, believe. And then another screen comes up. Christmas is coming. I looked at that and said, what? That doesn't even make any sense. Yes, Christmas is coming, but obviously these people are not prepared for it. They are so weighed down. 
down and depressed by what's happening right now. I know we've all noticed it, but I don't think we handle it the same way as they do. The message that Christmas is coming is not good news for this family because Christmas doesn't mean the same as it does for you and me. For us, Christmas is coming as a message of joy, of hope, even in the midst of a troubling time, even in the midst, perhaps in spite of it. We think of Israel's history and the promise that the Savior is going to come. That promise wasn't given a week before. When our first parents fell into sin and sin came into the world, God gave the promise for the very first time. Generations passed, hearing that promise, the Savior is going to come. When Israel were slaves in Egypt, it was that promise that kept them going. When they came out of Egypt and went into their own land, all their troubles weren't over. In some ways, they only began or got worse because all their neighbors hated them and wanted to take their land away from them. And so they had to fight to hold on to it. And then when the big dog in the area came and destroyed Jerusalem and took the people as captives to Babylonia, it was that promise that held them together. It was that promise that gave them hope. And when they finally returned back to their homeland after a 70-year captivity, Things weren't going to be better anymore. The same neighbors who hated them before were still there. And they wanted the land. And they wanted to destroy Israel. And through the generations, it was always the promise. Malachi, the last prophet of the Old Testament, gives those words of hope to Israel. God said, my messenger will prepare the way. And God's people must be purified in order to receive him. And here's the good news. The purification isn't up to us because we'd utterly fail. God would purify his people and make them ready to receive the Savior. This evening, we're going to talk about how to prepare for the Lord. First, we prepare by knowing God's promises. By knowing God's promises, we know what he's talking about specifically. He's directing his promises to our very needs. And so where is your hope? Is your hope in what the world is going to give you? Is your hope in what you can earn and squirrel away and save? Is your hope in the joys that you find in this world? Is your hope in the sins that you keep on committing? Is your hope in the fact that you think you don't need forgiveness? Hope can go into a lot of empty places. But God speaks to his people, stand up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. That's what Jesus said in the gospel lesson this evening. Some years ago, I saw an advertisement, Hawaii, Travel to paradise. I guess as a a pastor, that sort of catches my attention. Paradise. Not, Not that I think Hawaii is like heaven. But, you know, I got to talking to people, and one of the things that they almost always agreed about was that the real place, 
when you get there, it's a lot better than you thought it would be. Now, there's not too many places in this world that people can actually say that. And Linda and I had the opportunity to go to Hawaii, and uh, I would agree with it. It was a lot better than I thought it would be. But you know, going to Hawaii is very expensive. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of money. And when you get there, there's nothing cheap about the food and the tourism and anything you want to do. How much better is what God promises us in our eternal life? Much better than we can imagine. And the whole bill is paid for by Christ who through his death on the cross gives us the promise. And we know that promise, it's ours. And the second thing to prepare is to have faith in those promises. Not just know them, but put our faith in it. But watch yourselves lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap? When you have faith in the promises of Christ, you are focused on them. Nothing is going to sideline you. And there's so much in this world that will sideline us, that draws our attention away to that which is really important. Putting our faith in what God gives to us. You know, one of the rituals of preparing for Christmas is to take out the Christmas lights. Don't you just love that job? Oh, maybe you do. I don't. I give it to my wife. She has a knack for it. Within seconds, I would lose all patience. It's all snarled up. It's all big knots. I would lose patience trying to unsnarl a ball of lights. She's very patient. She pulls them all apart. And then what really gets me is when you put the lights on the tree and plug it in and nothing happens. You know something's burnt out and now you've got to find it. That could drive me crazy. The promises that God gives to us that we know of, we put our faith in. We know that God can untangle anything in our life, that he has the patience. He loves us that much, that he cares for us. How often has he forgiven us the same sins that we have done so often because we are powerless in the face of it? But through God's grace, he forgives us. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, he leads us. Having faith in that promise is important. And finally, to live God's promise. To know it, to have our faith in it, and to live it. To know the promises is to have them and use them. My mother had a bad habit. Now, she loved a bargain just as much as anybody else. And when it came to buying Christmas presents, she always looked for a bargain. Even in May, or September, or February. If she saw something and it was a bargain and she knew that somebody would like this, she would buy it months ahead of Christmas. Now you'd say, well, that's a woman that's really well prepared. Yes, but here's the problem. This is what drove us crazy. She would take the, the present that she was going to give and hide it someplace in the house so that nobody could discover it. And wouldn't you know, she would forget as Christmas would come that she had bought this thing because it was months ago. And Christmas would come and Christmas would go and she would kind of run across this thing sometime in March and go, oh, that present was for Eric. Well, thank you, Mom. That's, that's great. We can't take God's promises and hide them away 
thinking that when we think we need them, we'll find them. Those promises have to be at our fingertips. They have to be part of our everyday life. They must be close at hand so that we can be prepared, ready to receive our Lord and Savior. Our source of hope isn't that Santa Claus is coming. Our source of hope is that Jesus is coming. In his name, amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise for the canticle. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from this day all general will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things to me, and holy is his name. His mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the emanation of his He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the lowly. He has fulfilled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the gift of divine peace and pardon with all our hearts and with all our minds, Lord, in your mercy. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, for the proclamation of the gospel, for the calling of all to faith, for the call of St. Peter to Pastor David Totsky to be our pastor, for missionaries and Leaf, Eric, uh, Leaf Camp. Lord, in your mercy, for this nation and protection from harm, especially those suffering from fires and storms, for our civic leaders that they administer justice and good citizenship, for a peaceful transition in government, for prosperity, for the end of the pandemic, for the common welfare of us all, Lord, in your mercy. For a seasonable weather, Lord, in your mercy. For those who labor, for all those who travel, for those whose work is dangerous or difficult, especially Lisa, Lucas, and Beth, Sonia, Wendy, Kristen, Shelby, Cindy, Monica, Andrew, Krista, Devon, Mary, Julie, Kim, Dr. Bess, Rhonda, Heather, Dr. Ryan, Greg, Sandy, and Tim, and those who are essential workers. Lord, in your mercy, for all those in need, for those seeking employment, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and those who must raise their children alone, especially those who face great burdens, for the orphaned, for those in prison, Lord, in your mercy, for the homebound, for the sick and dying, and those who care for them, especially Robert Scheimer, Steve Ganaway, who is in the hospital, Glenn Fritchell, gravely ill, Pastor Bill Mitschke and wife, Pastor Loy uh, Scheidt, Uh, who is going to have knee replacement surgery on the 28th, for Reverend Chris uh, um, 
for Pastor Bill Chorman, uh, Ann, Debbie, Declan, Jackie, Lois, Joseph, Michelle, Anita, uh, for Pastor Bernie Fick, uh, J uh, Colette, Joe, Norma, Marion, Nathan, Ronan, Beverly, Justin, Seal, Matthew, Phyllis, Dorothy, Liz, Roland, Dr. Nitton and staff, Nancy and Rod. Lord, in your mercy, for those who celebrate birthdays, especially Jason, Michael, Sandra, Stephen, Phyllis, Dennis, Karen, and Matthew. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Grace, <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Please be seated for the closing hymn. and 